Injection of the shoulder. Injection of the shoulder could be part of the treatment of shoulder pain, especially if the pain is more than what the patient can handle, and the shoulder pain will probably hinder the progress of therapy. So which one we inject? Patient with restricted shoulder movement, patient that have night pain, patient cannot lie on the shoulder. Injection is predominantly used for elderly patient with cuff tears and for patient with impingement syndrome. That injection usually reduces the pain and the inflammation, and it can be done either blind or ultrasound for injection around the shoulder itself. However, if it is the scapulothoracic injection, you will give either fluoroscopic or blind injection. The injection can be done through a posterior lateral or anterior approach. I use the lateral and the posterior approach. The posterior approach is one centimeter below the posterolateral acromion. And this is how I find the spot, I mark it. I introduce the needle and I inject the fluid. The blind injection is usually not accurate. Some of the data report that the accuracy is between 65 to 75 percent. It's probably not true. Make sure you don't inject the rotator cuff tendon itself with steroids. When you do blind injection, you're probably injecting the tendon, and you don't know it because you don't see the tip of the needle. When you use an ultrasound, you must see the bursa. You must find the tip of the needle, and you must distend the bursa. You could do manipulation of the shoulder manually while the patient in the office after you finish the injection. So when do I do the blind injection? Usually the first time I see the patient, especially if the patient is elderly or the patient have an impingement syndrome. I will use the ultrasound when the patient have severe pain and some restriction of the movement or the patient have previous shoulder surgery. There are multiple points of pain in the shoulder, especially the shoulder itself and you got biceps tendon and AC joint. I personally examined the patient before and after the injection, and it is a very rewarding experience to see that your patient got better after the ultrasound-guided injection. I usually inject steroids, 40 milligram canalog with about 10 milliliter of lidocaine. The cortisone will give you a short term but reasonable relief in some patient. The numbing medicine will make the patient feel less pain immediately. However, the steroids can negatively affect the tendon and the cartilage. It may cause tendon damage and rupture. The shoulder is not flat. The shoulder is a ball and socket. And when you inject above the ball, you are controlled by the shape of the ball. Therefore, you may be injecting the tendon despite your good intention of injecting the subacromial area, which you probably cannot reach because of the shape of the proximal humerus. Even with ultrasound, I have to make multiple modifications to make sure that the needle is in the bursa. How many times do I inject the patient? About three to four times a year. How about the PRP? The PRP, it has a high level of concentration of growth factors, and it can help 
in healing of the tissues. So you get a blood a specimen from the patient, you centrifuge it, and the platelet concentrate is obtained and is activated before you inject the PRP into the target area. It's probably good for young patient that's active, that plays sports, that they have partial tear or intersubstance cuff tear that causes them pain that limits their activity. The PRP may help this patient to avoid surgery. It may allow healing of the tear, and usually the platelets is injected by the ultrasound because you can't afford using it blindly. You will see where the problem is and you will inject this problem. Thank you for listening. I hope that was helpful.